Hello everybody, my name is Guillaume and welcome to a new episode of Hit the Tone on Thomas Guitars and Basses. Now today is a bit of a special one, not only because it's John Mayer, but also because it's our 30th episode. And I cannot express how grateful I am that the format is still going, that it's going strong, that the numbers keep going up, that you guys keep being so involved and sending requests and, and songs and artists and yeah, um, thank you, thank you so very much for your involvement, for your comments, for your constructive criticism on my playing and what I could do better and, and this all means so much to me. So for that, just like we did for episode 10, I am going back to a song that means everything to me and that is Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. I think we're getting on three John Mayer songs in this format at this point. We've had uh, Who Do You Think I Was and Gravity, which was our 10th episode special sort of a thing. I'm not complaining at all. I, I absolutely adore John Mayer and his guitar playing and his songwriting. I'll happily go back to it. It is, however, such a challenge every single time because the emotion that, that he puts in his playing is just unreal. And so even if the playing in itself would have been easy, which is not, uh, it's still so hard to play right. So yeah, ha happily try, uh, try my hands on this one for this, uh, this 30th episode. Now talking about guitars, John Mayer is obviously associated with several brands and the latest in date being PRS. You've seen this one maybe in a couple other hit the tone. If not, if that's the first one coming out, well, uh, we just got a new toy in the video studio and I'm really excited about this. It's the PRS Silver Sky, uh, John Mayer signature. Uh, we got it in the studio to demo just single coil kind of things. And so when I ended up shooting this video, deciding on shooting this video, it was only logical that I was gonna use that guitar. Again, nothing mandatory here. I guess this song was recorded on a Fender Stratocaster. So if you wanna use that, uh, please do so. It is kind of tricky to recommend any other guitar, however, because it happens on position four. So like in between the neck and middle pickups, uh, giving us that basic tone. An amazing sound. Probably my favorite guitar sound in the history of guitar sounds, just that position four in the Fender Amp, super sparkly, super, <sighs> it's beautiful. Even without anything, and we're gonna add a lot of other things. <laughs> Unfortunately, I usually try and give you like other recommendations and other guitars that could fit the bill. It's kind of tricky with that position because only a guitar that has single, single in the neck and middle position can do it. So a lot of super strats will have it. A lot of um, guitars that refer to super strats, you know, obviously Fenders and this absolutely incredible <laughs> Silver Sky. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at the amount of pedals that we're gonna throw into that. If you've seen the 10th episode special, you know that it's hard to talk about a clean tone when talking about John Mayer, because although he sounds clean, it sounds almost clean, there's always so much going on in the signal chain for it to sound the way that it does. So this episode is no exception. Uh, the amp, fairly standard. Uh, I'm going with the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe as per usual. Uh, you'll have the controls on the screen. And uh, nothing crazy here, obviously nothing to match. He's three amp setup with the J-Mod, uh, PRS amp, um, the Dumble, obviously, and usually some sort of blackface Fender. So I'm not even trying to say I'm getting close to anywhere near where he is with that amp, but we can do a few things to help it. And the first thing we're going to hit in the signal chain is the Walrus Audio EB10, which has quickly become one of my absolute favorite pedals. Today, in that scenario, I'm going to use it as a clone. So it's that very sort of dry, hard clipping kind of thing, but that's not really like gainy. It's basically just a boost, but just in the right places. Then we're going on to some sort of blues breaker type of circuit. Now, I'm not sure about this. I know he was using the blues breaker, in the continuum sort of era. And I think it's a massive part of his tone. I don't know if it was used on that song particularly, but I'm gonna, because to me, that's what sounds closer. I'm gonna use the left side of the JHS double barrel as usual uh, in the uh, low gain setting, everything at noon. And that's gonna be my blues breakery 
kind of thing. And finally, it's really hard to talk about this song without mentioning the incredible amount of reverb and, and even delay that is on it. Uh, reverb is really self-evident uh, if you've listened to the Live in Los Angeles version, which is the one that I'm sort of basing this uh, rig on, is really heavy on the reverb. So I'll be using the Strymon Flint uh, in the 60s mode, which is in my ears the like the heavier kind of, uh, of reverb, and everything at noon, which is pretty generous, to be honest. And uh, talking about delay, I can't say that for sure. To me, that's the thing that I really associate with John Mayer in general, and that's like that one repeat short delay on everything, pretty much. Except for like, you know, a rhythm sort of gainy kind of thing. And then again, I'm pretty sure there's delay on there too. I might be wrong. If so, tell me in the comment section. I'm, I, the closer I can get, the happier I will be. So don't be afraid, tell me. Uh, but to me, there's one, a one repeat delay going on. Uh, at all times. And for that, I'm going to use the Dispatch Master by Earthquaker Devices, reverb all the way down, and all the controls pretty much at 10 o'clock, which is going to change from one delay to the other. Uh, yours might be completely different. What you're looking for is a very short slapback kind of thing. In isolation, this delay is going to sound like this. We're looking at something that's, again, one repeat, as close as possible to the original node, the original transient, without being in the way of this one. So you can, if you really just pick a single note quickly, you'll hear the single note and the delay repeat come in separately, not together. I think that makes a big part of that sound. Now let's turn all of that on and see where that takes us. If you're doing that kind of thing live, buy a switcher. That's going to be really useful. <laughs> Okay, I hope it comes through okay on YouTube and the usual stuff that people say when they're not sure that it sounds good. <laughs> but to me, it sounds really good in the room and I'm really happy with that. And I don't think I can get any closer to his tone without stealing his fingers, I guess. But yeah, I think that's as far as we'll go with that. And without further ado, let's jump into the last part of that video, which is as usual, the most important and is how to play the song. Disclaimer time, as usual, in the description box down below, you will find a link to everything I'm using today and some more recommendations at different price points if you feel like your gear is not cutting it. And if you want to spend some more time learning the song, and you might, <laughs> uh, the tabs will also be available in a different link in the same description box down below. Now your guitar is going to be tuned in E standard for this song, nothing crazy. I'm choosing to finger pick the whole intro and that's absolutely not mandatory. I do think that John Mayer uh, uses a pick and sort of chicken picks the thing on and off. Like there's lives where I've seen him not using a pick, others where he's using pretty much just a pick. So I can't really tell you exactly what's right. It's, I think, what is going to allow you to put as much variations and, and as much emotion as you possibly can in your playing, whatever is, whatever you end up choosing, pick or no pick. And with that in mind, let's have a look at the fretting hand for the introduction. Again, the tabs are in the description box down below. It's not particularly fast, but it's almost too fast to just put the right amount of intensity in every single note. There's a subtle vibrato on, on really, really small, really short notes here and there that if you miss, it's gonna sound completely different. I probably missed a lot and I'm sure you'll, you'll, you guys will let me know. And at the same time, there's some pretty complex positions there and mostly where your 
thump. And that's something you'll find a lot with John Mayer, with Jimi Hendrix, with Eric Gales. If you're trying to learn that type of guitar playing with the triads and all the embellishments that you can do with your pinky once it's free, um, placing your thumb over the fretboard to fret the low string is something that you're gonna need to get accustomed to. It doesn't come naturally. I have fairly small hands and I had to work a long time on this to get to where I'm at, which is far from perfect, but it's something, I guess. And now that you guys are all feeling down, let's have a look at the picking side of it. <laughs> Same story here, so many subtleties and so many variations of, of in intensity, in vibrato, in, in muting, in tapping even, like the way he hits the string in between certain notes and everything. Like there's so many nuances to that, just that intro. So take your time, work it bit by bit, position by position, and then work on the transitions in between one another, and I'm sure you'll get there. But with that said, that's it guys. I believe you have all the tools to hit the tone on Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. Again, I wanna thank you a thousand times for your kindness, for your support, for your feedback. Uh, this is only episode 30, and I'm looking forward to a thousand more. If you don't want to miss them, you know where to subscribe and like that video. Leave me a comment to tell me which song you'd like to see there in the future and I'll get to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, I wish you a fantastic week and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit The Tone. Mm -hmm.